Okay, great. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we are here to talk about the AAAF Ambassadors Program. Um, Andrea, who is our ambassador uh, in Serbia, uh, had the idea to get everyone together and talk a little bit about the um, the program and some of the work that the ambassadors are doing and um, like our ideas behind it. Um, and so uh, here we are. Um, I have a really quick presentation just about some of the thinking behind the program. Um, to give everyone some background, I know that not everyone has heard a lot about the program um, so far, depending on what calls you're on or which calls you're not on. Um, and so I'll do that. And then um, I think uh, the different ambassadors are going to talk a little bit about uh, the work that they're, they, they're doing before we have a conversation about some of the shared problems and ideas for, for the ambassador program. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Can you all see my screen with a presentation? Okay, great. Um, so just some background on the ambassador program. This is a, a program that Tom, uh, Tom Kramer and Josh uh, Hadro had been discussing for a little while before I came on board at AAAF. And um, I found this quote from Tom in uh, one of the documents, uh, kind of brainstorming the logic behind starting this program. And I thought it was a really nice way to kind of sum it all up. Um, and he wrote, AAAF can scale best when experts who are familiar with and passionate about AAAF champion it within their own communities and help represent in forums that current AAAF community leaders and representatives may not be attending. Um, and uh, I, I thought this was a really wonderful way to introduce the program because the ambassadors that we have, we have four ambassadors currently, are experts in their areas of focus um, and have been doing some really wonderful work. Um, and you know the ambassador program. I've I've said this several times. I think uh, several times on different calls. But this is work that a lot of people in the community are doing, um, championing AAAF in their particular area of expertise. Um, but this program really lets people, you know, work closely with the AAAF staff with the backing of the consortium um, in some, you know, official capacity to uh, be able to kind of spread the word of, about AAAF. Um, so it really just kind of deputizes people uh, to take on that more formal role. And it's something that we're trying out. You know, this isn't something that the consortium has done before. Um, you know, certainly other initiatives have ambassadors and are very successful with them. Um, so uh, we invited four people, uh, the outreach team and the AAAF staff um, who are on the call today um, to start the program, which we started this summer. Um, and just the work that the ambassadors do is largely self-directed. You know, the AAAF staff and consortium are not going to people and saying, you know, we would like you to do X, Y, and Z because we're not the experts in these areas. Um, and so we really leave it to the ambassadors themselves to choose, you know, where their work is best directed. Um, and the AAAF C staff, um, you know, provide uh, materials. So if folks need a PowerPoint template or some canned presentations. Um, if we have contacts that we can share with the ambassadors, if they would like to get in touch, you know, with a particular person at a certain organization or something like that, um, we're able to do that. And I think um, importantly, actually, the ambassadors share with us a lot of information about the work that they're doing and feedback in their particular communities so that the staff can learn from them and um, you know, get to know the community uh, in a little bit of a more broad, broad way. Um, so you know, I'm learning from uh, Joe, who's on the call today, like what a AAAF adoption in China looks like and what some of the unique concerns are there. Um, same thing from Andrea and Roger, who's working in natural history. So it's been really great to to learn a little bit about um, an area that I might otherwise not be able to delve into. Um, we also provide or had planned to provide guidance on holding more local events or events focused on a particular uh, field or area of research. Um, 
obviously that's not happening right now. We are all stuck at home, um, but we do hope that someday in the future, that's something that we can do as well. Sorry, my cat is protesting a closed door. <laughs> um, so right now uh, we are focusing on, um, actually I should talk about this first and then go back to this other slide. Uh, natural history uh, from Roger Hyam is working a lot in that area and has done some really great work. Um, Andrea is working on IIIF adoption in Serbia, as I mentioned. Uh, Joe is working on uh, efforts in China. Um, and Frederick is working on international uh, IIIF outreach um, and mostly works through attending conferences and meeting folks there. Um, so so that, is, that has been, again, hard with these, this event situation. We have a lot of limitations um, because of the pandemic. Um, so some other areas. <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> Some other areas of focus that we've identified uh, that would, you know, potentially be great areas for ambassadors to work in are in AV. Um, as many of you know, um, with the release of 3.0 of the API, the image and presentation API um, <laughs> now supports AV. Um, so uh, it would be great to have an ambassador uh, in that area. STEM is another area where we've seen some application of IIIF, um, but you know don't have any connections within our community. Um, so it would be great to have that. Um, we also are interested in um, some country focused outreach, uh, much like the work that <laughs> Andrea um, and Joe are doing. So, you know, we know there's a, con a considerable IIIF community in Brazil, um, and we'd love to identify other countries um, where similar efforts are happening, um, as well as other fields. Um, so, you know, natural history and STEM are two potential areas. Um, but if folks think that there are other places uh, where we could, you know, look for a little bit more support, um, we would love to hear about that during the discussion today. Um, so again, here are the current ambassadors. Um, I'm going to hand things off to them um, to talk a little bit about their work. Um, I don't know if you all want to go in the order that's on this slide, if, if that makes sense. Does that sound good to you all? So Roger, get me out of the way first. I think that would be good. <laughs> and you can see your cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to release him from prison. Um, <laughs> Start presenting. <laughs> I just hope mine's asleep in the other room and I hope he doesn't <laughs> up a ladder he can't get back down. So just hope he <laughs> doesn't yeah, keep off halfway through my presentation. He's been pretty active the last couple of weeks. All right, so I stopped sharing uh, and you should be able to share. Sorry, I was muted. Can you hear me? Yeah, cool. Yep. Uh, hi, I'm Roger. Uh, Roger Hyam from, uh, I'm at the Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh um, and I'm the natural history uh, ambassador. Um, so uh, I've been, uh, the, the problem we have in natural history is uh, a familiar one. Um, we've got a bunch of host institutions have pictures of uh, specimens. There's a big digitization of specimens uh, been going on for a few years and it's accelerating. Um, there are millions, perhaps billions of specimens, uh, uh, preserved specimens of different organisms in institutions around the world. Um, and what's happened so far is we've treated images like files and we've passed them around. They've gone out to aggregators uh, and the aggregate, so you, so you get the same image from multiple places and it, they're usually downsized. They've been digitized at higher resolutions and then downsized and then shared. Um, and I've, this is a familiar story. Um, so you end up with this, you know, uh, lots and lots of different viewers and some places, some people will, will let you uh, view them, some people let you download them. Um, 
the experience for a researcher is that they um, they can get access to a lot of stuff, but they have to hop backwards and forwards, have lots of tabs open uh, uh, to see things. And of course, this doesn't uh, have any of the power of if I don't really need to preach to this audience. I'm, so I'm, being an ambassador, I'm always set up to preach the benefits of AAAF, which I don't have to do here. Um, so obviously, if the uh, at least the major institutions around the world were publishing the images of their specimens through AAAF, you could build some really cool uh, applications over the over the top. Uh, and so it would be a really good thing. And that so that's been my mission for the uh, last few months. Um, I've had some money uh, which has paid me to do this within um, the European Union as part of the uh, Synthesis Plus project uh, leading on to DISCO, which is a um, kind of distributed network of uh, natural history collections. So I'm kind of funded to do a bit more of this and to talk about it. Um, we've had some successes, um, but we've got some barriers and things. So um, I won't talk for too long. Um, this is where we're at. I'd like to be further on than I am. Obviously, we've had uh, had a bunch of meetings lined up this year, but that didn't happen. Various things. So I'm kind of six months behind where I wanted to be. But um, uh, really, the thing I'd like to things I'd like to talk about are the are these barriers that, that are slowing down adoption. Um, on the supply side, we have uh, keeping a large amount of data available on spinning disk is a big issue for many institutions. So um, if you've got 500 medieval manuscripts, it's not really an issue. But if you've got 5 million specimens, um, suddenly you start saying, well, OK, how do we create um, image pyramids for 5 million specimens? or we've done the first million and we're going to do another million each year for the next umpteen years. So keeping those accessible um, is, is difficult. And some of these specimens are only looked at once in a blue moon. So, uh, you know, there's, there's, with the COVID, there was lots of jokes about uh, giving botanists access to herbaria and um, saying that they had to put the specimens to one side and not touch them after they touched them. So they would pass, you know, for 72 hours or something. And someone said, uh, well, nobody's touched this specimen for 72 years <laughs> and, and probably nobody will touch it again. So there's this element if you want to be able to see something and you want to have a triple IF representation of it, but it might not be looked at again for, for years um, was the danger of that. And also the, the, the Cinderella fact that these departments can be quite small and underfunded. Um, another issue that's been big is that we have um, collections databases which are quite specialised uh, and then we have uh, the possibility to put image servers in that will support a IIIF endpoint or at least the image part of the IIIF endpoint and it's how you join these things together because there isn't a common answer because there's such a variety of, of things. Um, ways around this we might have to think about centralised hosting or cloud-based hosting which would be interesting thing to do as a community where we can have some homogeneity uh, of, of resources by people just uploading their stuff. And also the, the kind of lazy loading or the lazy tiling. Uh, I, I say loading here, I should mean tiling so that you really only tile on demand. Um, and this is what might feed back into the IIIF standard is having some kind of way to say, hey, I can show you that magnification, but you're going to have to wait. It's going to take half an hour or, or you'll get some kind of notification back to zoom below this level. Um, that would be uh, probably a useful thing to do because then we can, we can archive uh, high level data. On the demand side, we've, you know, users are so used to that mishmash of, of specimens and if they consume a specimen, they can see it or they can download a big image and or something, then they think that's wonderful. And they don't realize what the benefits of, uh, of having a uniform approach could be. Um, so from that point of view, we lack that killer feature that would, would engage them. Um, annotations are important. We've argued about annotations forever, um, but 
it's not necessarily the annotations mechanism with the trip within triple a if it's where we then store them as a community and hand those feedback to the original uh, owners of the objects uh, i think um artificial intelligence image classification might be a killer feature so um finding similar specimens uh, that look similar to the one that you're looking at uh, through either supervised or unsupervised learning so rather than trying to put them into classes trying to to generate the classes um, and one answer to this might be uh, doing demonstrations and trend setting type things so the approach i've taken i've i've uh part of my um the grant proposal says we're going to have 10 institutions with triple f endpoints um we've cheated a bit in that there's a, a, a group of german herbaria have got together and they've all used the same uh, used the same publishing tool so we managed to kind of tick that box and get 10 institutions just by getting them on board but we've got several major institutions we've got people interested in 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 publishing their data uh, potentially millions of specimens so from the supply side that's kind of a working on that that's been slow this year for obvious reasons um on the demand side i've been working on putting together something particularly within botany which is uh, this uh, herbaria mundi uh, kind of global herbarium where we can do, at least start showing people that you can do side by side comparison of specimens from different herbaria and annotate them um, so that you can do, I mean, one of the key things you want to be able to do is take your specimen that you don't know what it is and compare it with other things. And you want to be able to do that globally. Um, so uh, I, I've been putting this application together, which is kind of a demonstration uh, thing to uh, show off to people. Um, I'd hoped it would have been done six months ago, but it's only just kind of been launched. You can you can go and log into it and have a play if you like. It's very rudimentary, but it it's a, the start for, for building some features. Um, so that's where I'm at. Um, I got we've been extended, so we've got another six months with money for this, and I'll probably just keep doing it anyway. Um, and but my focus will move more and more to trying to get this herbaria mundi working in order to get other herbaria to to adopt it. What I don't do is and there's a great division here is that I'm a botanist from a botanical background. So we've got an easy job because most things are flat. Um, the bryologists don't agree, but most of the, uh, you know, we've got millions of herbarium specimens that are a lot like documents. And so the use case is really quite easy. We can use an, even an old version of IIIF would support it. Um, but as soon as we start talking to entomologists, um, and people who want 3D rent, uh, things, that's, um, it then gets into more complex areas. And so there might be an argument for actually either replacing me as an ambassador at some point or getting another ambassador who's particularly interested in insects uh, and three-dimensional objects, if, um, or someone who is a 3D um, uh, ambassador who, who likes insects. Might be an interesting thing to do. Uh, but that's me. Um, talk to me uh, if you're interested in this field, or if you can answer any of those those problems uh, about um, the lazy generation of tiling would be would be an interesting one, and online hosting, big online hosting would be good. Is that long? How long did I go on? Did I go on too long? No, that's that's great. <laughs> I, I usually go on far too long. <laughs> Super uh, interesting. Thank uh, you. I'll stop sharing and let you. Um, okay, so next up uh, we have Andrea who is uh, working on IIIF adoption in uh, Serbia. So I think you should be able to share your screen. You're also a co-host. Uh, here it is. Okay, you see it? Yep. Great. <clears throat> Well, uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Andrea Sagic. I came from Serbia. So I try to uh, implement and to promote IIIF philosophy and uh, 
work in here in Serbia. Uh, uh, what's the main problem actually here in Serbia? We don't have uh, too much uh, specialists, uh, IT specialists or in uh, libraries here because uh, of, of course, because of money and the salary. Uh, the lot of IT industry is, uh, is here and is much payable for them to work for strangers than for here. So uh, I try uh, to find some uh, practical solution, especially for small library and for local uh, heritage, how they present their local her heritage in digital format of course supporting triple f so uh, how it start uh, we use uh, rescarta uh, toolkit it's a complete toolkit for uh, digitization after scanning the books and material just uh, go through several tools you have working offline and uh, publish it on a web app uh, of course, in June, the version 7 is published. And what's in version 7, it's finally support AAAF and uh, they deliver material through Mirador version 2. Uh, complete the process is uh, dealt with the Java uh, servers in servlets. Uh, so, uh, the process isn't so much complicated. It's mostly automatized, automatized. So the, you don't need uh, some uh, a large computer or development experience. Just work, and the program will work everything else. So we, <clears throat> when IIIF and Mirador is uh, in, uh, included in this uh, ver new version, we adapted. Uh, our heritage, our digital library, and uh, our the last year I presented on the IFLA World Congress in Athens, of course with the uh, accent on AAAF and the advantages of using AAAF. And right after that, <clears throat> when I came back, uh, <clears throat> main. Uh, library in Belgrade also <clears throat> find this solution very interesting and wanted to build their library, digital library using this program. We uh, a little have some improvement in a web <clears throat> page. We included a bootstrap uh, web uh, <clears throat> applications it built it on jQuery. So we get like the improvements. Well, uh, this year, of course, uh, I helped to another two public libraries to publish their content in uh, REST Carta. And of course, with the triple IF supported, the <coughs> with triple IFs supported. Uh, this year, during the COVID and lockdown, uh, my library uh, uh, find get this uh, uh, crazy situation to be a good chance maybe to uh, advance our uh, digital presence and uh, i build one little site triple f digital dot rs uh, it's a, only one um, html page the describe uh, a little bit about the uh, triple if it's and have one mirador viewer, uh, which is uh, actually one place to look uh, objects fr from all around the world who present their content through AAAF. And of course, when the version three is published soon, we as, as soon as it improved uh, uh, this new version of course one big thing i think is uh, f for me is uh, that i succeed to uh, officially put triple f standard as a new standard in serbia this process now is of course it is it's running but it's official now 
uh, until the it be it must be translated and published it's in progress i hope it will be uh, for 21st my intention is to translate all the material uh, and AP documentation in Serbia and further implementation of IIIF in institutions in Serbia. We plan uh, for at least 10 to 20 new public libraries to be included in that process. And uh, thank you. That will be it. And uh, what would I would like also to uh, share uh, with you it's how it look like in a uh, praxis uh, here is our mirador uh, three our uh, digital collection uh, it's based is based on collection of course you can uh, check what collection you want and you get this page the next one is uh, here is Triple F Serbia, published in March. Everything on Serbian. You, you have. We have also video how to use Triple F Viewer, Mirador, and uh, here's a list of some libraries and institutions in the world who get who to to look those objects, and uh, that's it. For me, of course, one of my intention is also to build one centralized uh, system. Where should I, uh, uh, like uh, e catalog, like Europea, Europeana, uh, to harvest all that material and uh, to make uh, fully search text searchable uh, content through different uh, collections? And, uh, thank you. That. That's it. I. Wonderful. Thanks, Andrea. That's great to hear um, that it's being accepted as a national standard. Very exciting. Yeah. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, OK, so who did we? Uh, I think Joe, Joe, are you on that? Yes. I think you should, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I can see your screen, Joe. But I think you might be muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, hello everyone, my name is uh, Joe. Uh, actually, uh, my journey with IIIF happened uh, three years ago uh, when, when I happened to uh, carry out a website project for Fudan University. Um, by that time, uh, I just know that IIIF is a, a wonderful uh, protocol. Uh, that is accepted by a lot of institutions. Um, so I introduced it in um, in Fudan University, and uh, and that they also uh, feel feel it feel feel very great to uh, have the chance to connect with the world uh, world in institutions, um, and uh, uh, with more. Then, then I happened to pay attention to uh, uh, the videos on YouTube um, that uh, introduce uh, IIIF. Uh, I, I really like the community, uh, all the people sharing their knowledge, sharing their ideas, and uh, make uh, make the protocol uh, much better year and year. So. Um, but by that time, unfortunately, um, well, uh, on the map that uh, Josh uh, used to sh sh show show in the conference, uh, China is a blank. Nearly uh, no no one, not one institution, uh, used used it uh, yet. Uh, I think the major reason is that 
um, you know, there, there is some regulation on Chinese internet. So uh, we cannot uh, uh, view, the, view the videos very easily. And uh, uh, that, that's a problem. Uh, but I think the protocol itself is neutral. It shouldn't um, be involved with politics. And I think uh, I will do the job to uh, introduce IIIF to uh, Chinese uh, institutions. So um, I guess I, I, I start to uh, join a IIIF event, um, especially uh, this year, uh, we, we, we held the first uh, Chinese web seminar to uh, introduce, uh, introduce introduce uh, cases uh, that start uh, to use IIIF as a tool to share um, our local uh, local images um, in, in Chinese culture. Um, uh, it turns out to be a very good start point. Um, more and more uh, uh, in institutions start to know IIIF they they showed their interest, so I think there's more I more I can do. Um, I think the best way to to uh, to broadcast here in China is to uh, try to um, establish a, a video site to to show the videos uh, those very great great ones uh, to Chinese audience. To, to Chinese audience. So uh, as you can see, here's the website. Although it's, it's not, a, not a dedicated website, it's, a, it's hosted on uh, a Chinese version of YouTube, but there's um, a, a lot of people interested in this. And I can show you one number. Um, it's the number of videos has played since it's established. It's more than 2000. So uh, I think uh, I, I will keep, uh, 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 keep uh, upload uh, videos on this site um, and then let more people um, know, know about Shopee Um Another thing is that I, I start to uh, held some uh, free seminar uh, to to some universities. Um, can show I can show you my one photo. I've showed it before to Mac, and this is in a chi Chinese academic uh, library. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, well, give a talk to to the uh, library cu curators to to tell them uh, what is Chopin, um, and uh, they start to use it as a uh, very useful tool. Um, also, actually, uh, I'm I'm also. Uh, uh, independent software provider uh, who are very uh, fascinated about uh, technologies. So uh, just as uh, Roger mentioned, um, currently there's a lot of um, barriers for IIIF to broadcast uh, further. Uh, one of them is the uh, skill scalability. Uh, actually, I, I give, give the uh, uh, community sharing uh, like two weeks ago. And uh, the video can be found in uh, YouTube. Um, so in that, in that sharing, I introduced my uh, idea of how to uh, raise the productivity, productivity uh, of uh, IIIF image editing uh, with a Lightroom and, uh, and with uh, Microsoft uh, Excel. Uh, and uh, these days I'm also trying to, um, 
to make it a more intelligent, to, to make it uh, well integrated with the uh, AI uh, backend. Um, actually, my recent study is trying to um, crop seals from uh, some ancient Chinese seal books. Uh, actually, uh, currently, uh, I have um, uh, 140,000 uh, images of uh, ancient Chinese seal books. Uh, I I'm plan to use uh, AI to crop them out um, in a very uh, la large scale. So uh, during that process, I think uh, Lightroom proved to be a very useful tool. You can um, crop them, you can mark them, you can rate them, you can even add a keyword. And uh, uh, also, uh, this, this, this tool is integrated with a cloud-based backend, uh, which uh, is cloud-native and uh, uh, very good at dealing with uh, large-scale uh, large image processing. So for details, um, uh, you can watch the video on YouTube. Uh, so that's all uh, about the things here in China. I uh, hope to uh, talk with you guys uh, further uh, in, in the following days. Great, thank you, Joe. That was really wonderful to see. And I, put, I wrote in the chat, and I know I told you this before, but I am so envious that you are able to <laughs> meet with people in person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I almost don't remember what that's like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Frederick, do you want to talk a little bit about what um once once you can travel, uh you're thinking about or um some of your thoughts pre-pandemic? Sure, I can yeah. talk a little bit. I right. Talking from a computer that has no video, so you'll have to be satisfied with a picture from quite a few years ago. <laughs> um, as Meg mentioned, I go to a lot of conferences, including every year until this year, the IFLA World Library and Information Congress held annually in August somewhere in the world. At those conferences, particularly the IFLA conference, I would often ask about IIIF. I don't remember how long ago it was when I first became aware of it, but it's been quite a few years already. Um, and I noticed when I first started mentioning IIIF maybe four years ago, I would get blank stares. Now the stares are becoming less blank, but there's still quite a lot of, what is it? What's IIIF? Um, so the awareness is changing. Um, Slowly, I haven't, I haven't changed. I haven't uh, made any effort to distinguish between the awareness of technologists or library technologists and just plain old library people. Um, I haven't made any effort at all. Uh, in Europe, uh, um, Asia Pacific, not Asia Pacific, but Australia, New Zealand, and North America, it's become. There's more and more awareness of it. South America, Africa, and a great deal of Asia, there's still not a whole lot of awareness of IIIF. One thing that you didn't mention on your first slide, Meg, was um, how to convince digital library providers these, that are commercial providers like ContentDM and others, how to, to implement IIIF. And they typically do so in response to customer demand. I work with a couple of commercial digital library, I can't think of a better way to say it, uh, providers out of New Zealand. One of them has implemented IIIF quite a few years ago. Um, 
I suggested to them that they integrate it into their uh, newspapers, hosting uh, digital newspapers platform quite a few years ago. And finally, in response to a requirement from the Swiss National Library, they did. So now the Viridian software uh, does support IIIF. I'm not sure to what level right now. Another company I work with in New Zealand from Wellington, Recollect, um, relatively new to digital library software, but they are now implementing IIIF and it's scheduled for, for completion in the first quarter of this coming year. But they also did so in response to a requirement, and not a firm requirement, but um, uh, be nice to have requirement from an RFP that they respond to here in the US. So it's, um, it's important, I think, although I don't really have any recommendations on how to do it, it's, but it's important to ensure that commercial software knows about IIIF and makes some effort to support it. And I think that's the, the, it will do so in response to tenders for digital library systems that demand IIIF support. So no slides, very short, and thanks. No, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, that's uh, it is. It's a good point about the encouraging software providers to to adopt IIIF, um, and a good point about how they often do that in demand uh, in response to demand from end users or or subscribers or you know the people who who pay them. So thanks. That was um, really wonderful. Uh, to hear, and um, I'm sorry that you're not able to travel to conferences. <laughs> so um, I think we have about 15 minutes uh, for questions and discussion. Um, I don't know if anyone on the call has any questions uh, about the program or for any of the ambassadors. And um, also if any of the ambassadors have any topics um, that you'd like to discuss, I think this would probably be a good time uh, for that too. So I will open up the floor. Yeah, can I? We have um, some uh, agenda about uh, today's meeting. I first th thank you all for that. Uh, uh, one question for Frederick. You're also IFLA member. Uh, maybe we can make some special interest group or uh, uh, collect some IFLA members to make some uh, IIIF uh, specifically special interest group. I know digital um, libraries is non-formal. It's not section. It's something about special interest group. What is I, I, Yes, I am a, an IFLA member and I have made some effort along those lines IFLA has a committee on standards and um, I yeah. put them in touch with uh, IIIF uh, to adopt IIIF as a standard and the standard is in quotation marks. It, that hasn't gotten very far yet, but mm -hmm. I think you're right. The technology or the software section in, in IFLA would be a great place to, to make start. a little bit more noise about IIIF. <laughs> Yeah. In fact, it would be nice to, if, if we ever meet again in person, or yeah. if we meet again virtually, to devote an entire session to implementations of IIIF. Yeah. yeah. I think we might, I think between the two of us, we might be able to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> uh, also, I'm, uh, I think something about the IIIF ambassadors program maybe that would be a good maybe good place to as to serve as a uh, project partner finder you know to share information from our uh, community for our local some about the project calls and something like that so also that would be a good also function of ambassadors. 
if you agree, of course. I think that makes a lot of sense. Sorry, I'm trying to type and take notes and uh, respond to the meeting at the same time. So <laughs> I'm delayed, that's why. Any other uh, items or questions? Yeah, uh, uh -huh. okay. Roger, please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm wondering if anyone in the wider meeting has anything to say about um, kind of a, a shared hosting kind of approach. Uh, often um, the conversations I've had about implementation of IIIF, it's uh, a library or university, and it's taken as read that they have the resources to host uh, the the image stacks and things that they need need to do. But then when I come to talk to people who are thinking about implementing, that's usually the biggest hurdle is um, uh, the continuity and uh, you know the business model for keeping this stuff online. Um, and that's a kind of that, that should, that's actually the question they're asking. They're not asking about how do they use triple AF or, or whatever. They're saying, oh, it's triple AF a way for us to, to make our images available, as in to keep them just physically attached to the internet. Um, so I'm just wondering how we could merge those two things together so that um, I've, been, I've been looking at, uh, so Zenodo, I don't know if people know Zenodo, the, the CERN repository. Um, one of the things I did was a little test application where you could load an image up to Zenodo, and then I had an application that wraps that image with a IIIF endpoint. So um, you, uh, so it would just download the image and, and and do it, and you could we could have a delayed response for that, so that uh, uh, Zenodo looked after the persistence of the data, but then you could have something else that just called it and generated the tiles when they were needed uh, and served those. Uh, but that was very, that's a very kind of crude attempt at this. And I just wonder if anyone else in the community is wrestling with the same thing, because it must be a very common uh, issue. Well, it's... Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, please go ahead. No, no, no. It's a, at Yale, it, it's a very different story, but inside the university, there are many museums and uh, we have like three major museums combined have uh, uh, a workflow, shared work workflow. So we are very close to converting the to, to reply after that uh, three combination of the three museums and then trying to recruit other like many smaller museums inside the university. But I, I guess, yeah, that's the so it's all shared what we are trying to incorporate to like um, just from from digitization to like they submit to us the central IT the 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 master or source images and then we we pro process them centrally to generate triple IS string. So, yeah, I, I guess that's not very relevant. So. I mean, it's, it's in, in a sense that this this is still very hard. So I, I can imagine the different. Yeah, so it's it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard when you even when you have Yale, yeah. Yale, Yale IT kind of resources to to host it. Right. Um, yeah. It's how, how did, yeah, my question is how do you do something for nothing? <laughs> I think, mm -hmm. which is a museum. Most museums uh, asking that question. Uh, what I was going to ask is how many of how many collections are hosted in the cloud on AWS or or Azure, for example. Uh, the, both of the companies in New Zealand and as well as Content VM, all of their services have moved have since moved to the cloud. Would it be possible for there to be uh, triple IF? What? Uh, 
a set of IIIF tools or APIs that are specific to the cloud. I mean, it already is in a sense, but. Um, yeah, so a, a good analogy. So, so um, my institution, our institution, everything is uh, is local to us because we have a, a quite a yeah. good academic pipe and for, for historic reasons, you know, investment in capital has enabled us to buy servers and machines. But then if you want to invest in a cloud service, you, you, that's ongoing commitment. So that yeah. comes from different budgets and you have to have different conversations. And uh, generally, uh, I don't know if it's the same elsewhere in the world, you know, public sector, they will buy you a big machine, but they won't pay for someone to work it because that's a long-term commitment. Um, so uh, that's changing slowly because government procurement has realized that, and I think this is the same in different countries from the people I've talked to, um, is that the government procurement has got together and realized it's actually much cheaper to pay Amazon and to have a, a, a common deal with Amazon to provide, or, or Google or one of the other cloud providers to provide those services rather than buy the machines. And so that, that's slowly changing and things are moving into the cloud in that sense. But it's not, um, that's, a, that's kind of each institution physically moving their bits into the cloud. And it really doesn't matter where they are. The fact that they're on AWS now rather than on a physical machine in their institution hasn't changed. They still have to pay to find the money to run that machine or run that cloud instance. Um, I think maybe what I'm thinking about is something like, if you think of uh, the a Google Earth engine is quite an interesting model where they have, you know, the, a large amount of, web page. Oh, <laughs> my phone just went because I said Google, <laughs> it's just opening uh, the wonders of uh, <laughs> technology. Uh, Google's listening to me. Um, so Google Earth in, engine, um, they have all the computation and lots and lots of data stored and it's free for a certain use and then certain categories of people pay for it. So you could, I could imagine you could have an infrastructure where um, institutions paid what they could and some, for some institutions it was free, but it was a common architecture. I mean, that architecture would be in the cloud somewhere. Everything's gonna be in the cloud at some, some point. Um, so, you take something like, like the Zenodo repository and there are other repositories around which are publicly funded repository, but then you add AAAF onto that. Um, so, I mean, basically if someone says they will look after your data in perpetuity, it's like, well, can you look after it with a AAAF endpoint on it? <laughs> yeah. uh, because if you could do that, then we could build services on top of, of that and viewers and things. Um, the, the I'm curious to hear if others have pointers, but I, I would say the two that I know of, or one really that I know of, and there are a lot of caveats with it, but Internet Archive does provide some AAAF functionality yeah. and capability, you know, and it's not, uh, you know, like that comes with a, a caveat emptor, like, you know, they, yeah. they, I don't think it's going away, but the, the AAAF functionality is maybe in sort of a quasi labs or quasi test state yeah. and I don't want to get people's hopes up I mean we've been sort of pressuring and having a few conversations with Wikimedia to serve as kind of a similar kind of structure that that's not the solution for everyone um, but it is maybe an on-ramp for some places kind of along the lines that you're talking about yeah and, and maybe we need it's not just one provider but a way of doing it that might be done by Wikimedia, that might be done by, that we could then say, oh, Wikimedia's doing this, and then we could go to Zenodo and say, can you do it? And we could go to other uh, kind of public repositories and things like that that are being set up. Um, and you say, you could follow this model. Might be a way of doing it. Um, yeah, it would be good. Wikimedia would be good. I'm just reading who, <laughs> reading the comments as well. And Meg's typing them in.
So we are just about at time. Um, we have just a couple more minutes. I don't know if anyone has any additional comments before. I we... have one last question uh, for Josh, I think. Uh, is there a Mirador viewer that lives in the cloud? Um, well, that's a good question for the Mirador folks. I mean, there is kind of the dev instance um, that is, you know, pretty usable. There are a bunch of, um, you know, kind of generic Mirador instances. Um, we've talked about with the new IIIF website, kind of the revamp of that coming in, you know, in the next month or two. Um, you know, like there's there's a lot more to discuss there. Like we don't necessarily want to host, you know, the the canonical version and be the place, you know, for Mirador because they already have that. Um, but we do kind of want to integrate better into the website examples of Mirador and Universal Viewer and tip, you know, like the ones that we can make uh, available, we want to. So I guess the answer is like, let me see if I can find it. The, you know, the Netlify version of Mirador um, is fully functional, is up to date. And that's the one I would point people to. Um, does that sort of answer your question? Yes, it did. And I'm looking at it right Great. now. Cool. Oh, and I, yeah, Joe mentions a, a good point too, which is that he's done some good work to, to with his simple site project and simple Mirador for extension to that. Um, he, he's made it, you know, if you are familiar with GitHub workflows, I think he's uh, worked through some some good steps to, to relatively easily replicate um, simple Mirador instances. So thanks for that, Joe. Okay, I think are we merging into the... Yeah, it's 10.59, so we have one minute. Um, so I'll just go ahead and thank everyone for attending. Um, especially thanks to Andrea for uh, putting together the session and you know having the idea to get everyone together. I think it was really great to, to be able to have everyone kind of like meet together for the first time and have this conversation. And hope it will be often yeah. meetings. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks everyone. I'm gonna stop the recording. Bye everyone. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Meg.